So it's a very exciting day for me. I've got a HQ2 Dormanaro. It's absolutely in the build stage, as you can see. Uh, I bought this car oh, nearly 10 years ago as a roller. Um, back in the day, I put a big block shim in it. I put a roll cage in it when it, these weren't to, worth too much money. And I used to drag race it. Um, I woke up to myself and cut the cage out of it. And I'm gonna fully rest over the car now and, and make it a bit of a pro street. They're obviously worth a bit of money now, so I'm gonna keep this in the family, make it a really nice car. And so I cut the cage out. Um, I'm gonna put it all original interior back in it and all those sorts of things. And it will still have a big block shiv in it because I've got one, I don't wanna double spend. But the first thing I wanted to do was get the rear end sorted. So I took the car to McDonald Brothers. So thanks for those guys for fitting the car in. Castlemaine Rod Shop don't do mini tubbing and fabrication work. Um, for rear end, so I thought I'd keep it local. Took it to McDonald Brothers. I just picked the car up yesterday. They've done a fantastic job. What I need to do now is the front end. So I come to the Castlemaine Rod Shop. They do a, a fantastic front clip, a chrome molloy tubular front end. As I said, I've got a big block Chev. Um, I've got some really big pipes, you know, two and a quarter inch pipes. I need clearance and all sorts of stuff. So instead of cutting up a standard front end, just go tubular. By the time I spend all the money on it on a standard front end. You're better off going tubular with all the adjustments. The combination I want to, want to go in will go in. Uh, hopefully there might be some, some juggling and shuffling, but, but that's all part of the build. So it's a pretty exciting day for me here today. Uh, put the front clip in them and get this thing rolling. Rear end's done, tick. And the front end will be done today, tick. Uh, the build is absolutely underway. So as you can see, there's quite a difference. Obviously a engineered product, chrome molloy, fully adjustable, and I certainly know the benefits, that's why I'm doing it to the car. But Matt, for people who are a bit iffy about whether they're gonna put one in or not, what are the actual benefits putting this in? Well, obviously you've got rack and pinion steering, so you go away from your factory steering box. You've got dual adjustable Viking coilovers, so you can set up for comfort, for drag racing, for whatever you wanna do with it. Um, obviously, you can go wheelwood brake, so you can go to our base brake option. There's three different size wheelwood options. Um, you've got built-in caster angle in the stub axle and the way we make the arms here. And also you have shimmable upper arms to do camber caster adjusting. It's, and obviously being chromoly, it's got a lot more flex in a standard front end. And if you had to reco a standard front end, it's probably in the ballpark of what you'd spend anyway, so. What time you cut the original front end? Cut the front end up or get the steering box rebuilt and then yep. put coilovers in it and stuff where it's just bolted in and yep. ready to play. So I'll see the bolt-in pads. Is this a direct bolt-in? So I've all got a standard front end in at the moment, um, obviously just to roll around. Yep. So, so this will be a direct bolt-in. Undo that. We don't use the body rubbers from factory, just yep. direct steel to steel. Uh -huh. Comes with a shim kit because we found in some Obviously being pressed out the bodies yep. over so many years as they can need a bit of packing here and there. Yep. Um, as far as panel fitment, they've got a fully adjustable bumper iron so you can adjustable here for your rad support or up and down for your mounting pads. Okay. So obviously if you shim and in the car. Shim the body gotta, or if you want to get your you panel shim gaps. Up the radio support panel. Yeah. To suit. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So that, that'll bolt in, that's great. So now my engine combination, it's obviously a big block Chev, it's got quite a big sub because it was an ex-drag racing engine. Yep. I've made it pretty suitable for the street now, but that's going to be our next challenge, um, is trying to get it in. So we will have to shim the engine up a little bit. Yeah, so we'll play it by ear, but we'll put some get some mounts and put some mounts and stuff on it, and well, we'll put the front end in first, I think, and see how we go. I feel the sump may need some modifications yep. or something but well, that, that's we'll play this, it by ear and see, yeah, that's what see this how we about. go. That's what this is about, this is a dummy fit. Yep. Obviously the front end's going to stay how it is. Yep. We will just suit the engine and the sub and even the pipes. We've got two and a quarter inch primary pipes, big pipes. I think we're going to be pretty good for clearance for that, but the sub's the issue at the moment. So, um, but everything's going to fit. That's what playing with cars is, isn't it? Trial and error. Cross. <laughs> Let's do it.
as you can see, after 10 minutes, uh, we've got the front end out. Very, very easy job. Um, I did notice on the Monaros, you've got an extra pickup point for mounting point here. Um, we, on the new front end, has only got the one at the back. Is that is that needed? Is that well, a it, variation that... There's a vari we found in some models there's a variation. Usually it's a Monaro thing yep. that has that rear pickup, but we yep. have found some later model stuff has got that rear pickup. We don't know if it's just the dregs that Holden had and they've sent them out in that, those models yep. or whatever. But that front end is engineered and built to replace this unit. Yeah. So that, that rear pickup is obviously something Holden decided they had to have for not having a rear pillar or yep. we're not exactly sure, but we've never had an issue with engineering missing that. Yeah, so it's not actually noticed. So we've got two pickups at the front and generally one at the back but the Monaros do have the pickup points at the back here, but they're not needed, so not, not stressing at all. Then you go to the very back one, maybe, Barry. Yeah. Might get that easier, eh? So we put the front clip in, we put them in loosely, just finger tight, put the, uh, the hoist under the chassis, pump the car up. Now we've got some little gaps, so there is shim supplied. So as you can see, there's these little gaps. So it's telling us the car needs, needs shims, which as we said is supplied. It's just one of those trial and error things. Some cars need it, some cars don't. It's just one of those things, every application is different. And that's the fun of all this. So as you can see, down on the ground, we didn't have really any issues at all. We just shimmed the, um, the front end to, to what suited the car, which you have to do with some applications, but uh, it's now rolling and no real issues at all, but we've got the hard part coming up. Yeah. We've got a big motor with a big sub. We're not sure about clearance issues, but trial and error, that's exactly what this is. This is a, a dummy fit. If you really wanted to put the front end in and keep it in, you have to torque the bolts up. We didn't do that, obviously, because it's going to come out again, but um, no real issues this far. No, pretty smooth sailing. So, yeah, just had to put shims in it, bolted half of it up and found that it needed a bit of shimming in the front. So, yep. obviously, put the shim pack shims in it to make it even all the way around. So, don't just shim the front and leave the back. So, balance that out. Now, we're just going to try and get that big lump of engine in the hole and make sure we get the right driveline angle at that we can get to if the sump doesn't fit, so let's happy days. Get, let's get to the headache. Mate, if this, if this goes in, it's, it's actually unbelievable. It would be very unbelievable. There you go. It goes in. Come on. That's in. That'll do, won't it? All right, pack it up. Let's go. <laughs> to the pub, boys. Mmm. How you looking, Barry? Needs to go back a fair bit more. Yeah. As we thought, uh, it's obviously quite a big sum. This is a race sum. Um, it's going to hit the rack. And we're just going to mark it now. This is a bit of a trial and error. So we're probably going to flatten the front of the sump because it hangs down quite a bit. It's not going to, it's not going to hit um, with stroke and all those sorts of things on the crank. And there's a fitting come out of the rack. So we're going to hit, hit some clearance for that. But this is a wide pan rail engine. So um, it's probably over sump for a street car. So we can probably afford to cut a little bit out here and there. But now it's just about trial and error. Fitting, cutting, and uh, working things out. That's what this is all about. It's a dummy fit. Yeah, so you see how that's flush. So we've got all that room we don't actually need. Yeah. That's just for splash, so it comes back, but as I said, we can flatten that. I'm just gonna get this clearance, and if we've got to cut in here, it's not, it's not a bit, so where's the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah so we're back. Just in there. You can scallop that out, and we flatten, hopefully. So what we're doing right now is, we've got the sub bolt, we've got it sitting on the engine mounts, 
We just want to see, before we start cutting this up, that the, uh, the rod and the counterweight of the crank isn't going to touch the rack. And how are we looking? Look, keep going a little bit more. Yeah, no, you've got 25 mil easy enough. 30, 25 30 mil. 30 mil. Just go over further and we'll make sure the counterweight's the same height as the rod. Which I believe we should be. If you can, that is. Someone put the rod bolts in the wrong spot. <laughs> We've made it hard for you. You probably could have just went back the other way. Keep going. Stop there. A bit more, maybe. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, that's going to be your lowest point there, I reckon. So this sub's obviously not a street sub. It's a full race sub. You know, it's got kick outs. It's a wide pan rail engine. Um, it's been modified before for a standard front end. But as you can see, the step ups We've probably just got to continue that to the front to allow for the rack to fit in. And then on this side, we're just going to do a little notch for the power steering rack for, for some of the fittings. And as you can see, the pan rails, it's got quite a bit of extra room out this side. So cutting into that's not going to be an issue. And we just need someone to do it. So we called upon the man. Jason here, can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, easy. Is that easy? Uh, I'm not sure about easy, but yeah, it'll be pretty straightforward. You're the man to do it. Off you go. No problem. Yeah. We're, not, we're not far away going. Fair way off the um, cross member. I might have it in the wrong spot too. Yeah, I guess. So third time the engine's been in and out, but that's what this is all about, trial and error. We put the we mounted the trans up with the engine. We just wanted to see the angle of the engine. We're gonna get blood about three, three and a half degrees, uh, laying backwards obviously. And we just wanted to see if there's gonna be tunnel clearance, which there is, absolutely is, so that's great. We've pulled it back out. We've now cut this up. Um, so no turn it back now. We've cut the sump. We've notched out where the power steering fittings are going to be. We're actually going to put this back on the engine and put it back in the car, just to make sure that we've got all clearance issues before we fully weld the sump up. And you know, there's no turn it back then. You've rolled the sump if it doesn't fit. So we just want to, you know, it might be three or four, five, ten times it goes in. It doesn't matter. We just want to get it right. And uh, hopefully this is enough. If not, we take it back out, trim it up. But once we weld it finally, then it's done. So trial and error, here we go again. So I'm off, so I'm go again. That's a wrap for the HQ Coupe today. We've got the front clip in and fitted up perfectly. It was a bit of an extreme case to put this engine into this car. It's a 638 cube, you know, I made, I made 1300 horsepower aspirated. We've made it a bit more streetable, that's why we're going to put it in this car. But the sump pan, a wide pan rail engine, um, the sump pan is huge. So to fit that in the car, we have to do heavy modifications. It's in there getting welded now, which is totally fine. It's going to fit, so that's perfect. The pipes, we're a little bit ambitious trying to fit the pipes and thinking that they were going to fit. Obviously this top arm gets right in the way, it's there for strength, so that needs to be there. So we'll just have to get some custom made pipes, that's totally fine. We've 
We're going to get the steering shaft put in so we can make the pipes around that. But as I said, this is an extreme example um, to make a video around this engine. If you've got a standard big block Chev, small block, LS, it'll slide straight in. Um, so a pretty good front end to start with. That's why I want to put it in the car. Um, so if you've got a Monaro or a sedan, highly recommend it. As I said, I'll put it in all my stuff. But if you've got a ute or a panel van, um, we don't make the tubular front ends, but we make all the stuff um, to make them steer nice and go really well. Obviously drive the blown HJ, and uh, I've driven the wheels off that thing. We might go for a little bit of a look and see what the ute and panel van guys can do to their front ends to make them just as good as what we've got here. So as I explained, the Monaro and the sedans have got the tubular front ends, so, but we haven't neglected the ute or the panel van scene. So we've got Black Rack's um, power rack here. Um, I've driven uh, the blown HJ with this setup in it and it handles absolutely perfectly. And we've got the tubular arms with the coilover shocks in as well. Um, and, you know, they look good, fully adjustable. So just as good as a, a tubular arms, but you can use your standard, standard kit. So, um, as I said, I've drove, driven blown HJ, power skid, burnouts, and I was quite surprised at how um, well it drove. So that was something I wanted to do to all my cars, is um, put the power racks in them, make sure the front ends are up to spec and it all fits and drives nicely, and they absolutely do that.